Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 33 of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, uh, first of all, at the top of the show here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some bits and pieces of news. Um, one is that if you had some trouble getting to cameraposition.com or getting your episode of Camera Position over the last week or so, you're not alone. Um, I think because I was uh, just a recent member of the Photocast Network, and I'm guessing that a lot of you people out there who are listening are uh, have found camera position through the Photocast Network, because all of a sudden my web traffic spiked, which meant that my web server uh, uh, folks, the people who host cameraposition.com, uh, <laughs> it, it sort of shut down. So I've solved that problem and uh, moved some of the content off to some other places where uh, I won't have bandwidth problems, but I sincerely apologize for that. It caught me by surprise. The number of listeners uh, nearly tripled almost overnight, and uh, so I had some problems maintaining camera position on the web. So hopefully I'm all back up and ready to go and, and ready to, to uh, get that content out there to you. So Thanks very much for those of you who subscribed, and I'm sorry that if you subscribed and all of a sudden couldn't get camera position, uh, it was uh, really just sort of the fault of the internet gods there. Uh, let's see, another topic that I want to talk about is um, for those of you in the United States, and I, I, I may have mentioned this uh, in a past camera position, in fact I'm pretty sure that I did, uh, there is a uh, a series uh, a, a tour sponsored by the Adobe Corporation that is going around the United States stopping at institutions of higher education uh, 25 of them around the US and this tour is pretty exciting in terms of what Adobe is doing first of all they have contracted with a really world class photographer uh, named Colin Finley and I'll put a, a link to his website on cameraposition.com but it's Colin Finley uh, with a a y uh, on the uh, on the end dot com and uh, Colin is going around the country with Adobe and talking about his career in photography as both a, a commercial photographer a lifestyle photographer and also a uh, committed journalist uh, photographer journalistic style photographer and that uh, content is counterbalanced with some content that Adobe is delivering surrounding its Lightroom application. Uh, Lightroom, a new uh, uh, sort of image management, raw file management uh, software package for digitally enabled photographers. And I mention this because this particular roadshow that Adobe is uh, is putting on is stopping at my institution, College of DuPage, in Glen Ellyn, Illinois, the suburbs of Chicago, uh, this coming Thursday and Friday, Thursday evening and uh, Friday during the daytime. So if you are interested in learning about Lightroom, you might want to go to the website Project Photoshop Lightroom, projectphotoshoplightroom.com, and again, I'll put a link to that on the Camera Position uh, podcast as well. But uh, there is a, a combination here of inspirational content from Colin Finley and then also Julianne Cost, the uh, terrific, if you've never seen her before, uh, she is absolutely terrific uh, at presenting software packages and, and telling people what it is that they can do with these software packages. Uh, and uh, she will be doing training on Adobe Lightroom on uh, Friday at uh, College of DuPage. And the, so the dates here are October 5th, Thursday evening for Colin Finley, and uh, October 6th, Friday during the daytime, for Julianne Cost demonstrating Lightroom. And again, I'll put some uh, links on the cameraposition.com blog for these events. So if you're in the area of Chicago and you're interested in uh, attending these, these events and you do come to one of them, uh, come on up and introduce yourself. Uh, I'll be the, I'll be the guy with the gray beard. Um, so, uh, please, uh, please say hello and tell me, uh, that you are listening to camera position. Cause I'd be interested in meeting anybody who is out there. So those are a couple of, uh, pieces of announcement, uh, that I wanted to make. And I also wanted to re remind those of you who have 
just been listening to Camera Position and no other photo-related podcasts that you may want to stop into. In fact, you really should stop into the uh, photocastnetwork.com uh, website, which is a network of some of the higher quality photo podcasts out there, tips from the top floor and photo walkthrough. And in fact, sort of as a, as a side note, uh, this coming week, the first week of October, I will be guest hosting Tips from the Top Floor for Chris Marquardt. So uh, uh, Chris is at the uh, uh, Podcast Media Expo in Ontario, California. He's a German guy, and, and uh, he is uh, in uh, here in the United States and California right now. And he has solicited some of the other network folks to take over his show while he's gone. So I'm excited to be able to do that. So you want to tune into tips from the top floor you'll hear me this week and uh you will hear chris marquardt coming back in about a week uh week and a half uh for tips from the top floor which if you've never heard it is an absolutely terrific podcast about all things uh digitally photographic so very different from camera camera position and rightfully so so in uh this week's uh camera position one of the things that i wanted to do was uh go back a little bit to um, a comment that I got um, from uh, Don Bricker, who is a listener to uh, Camera Position, and uh, he had written me a note thanking me for Camera Position, which I greatly appreciate, and I'm always excited to hear from those of you out there in the world uh, who are listening, and uh, especially interested in hearing where people are uh, listening to me from. It's always kind of fun to find out that people are listening uh, from distant places. So, um, but, uh, in this, um, uh, note that Don had written me, he said, I've been meaning to ask you, do you have a list of books that you think every photographer's library should include? And what a terrific question, because it, uh, it, it's a terrific question for a number of reasons. Number one is that it, uh, provides fodder for a, a whole lot of conversation about, photography and and what's important and what's important to who or whom in photography uh, and how we choose what it is that we choose to to collect uh, and certainly as many of us are probably collectors of photography itself you know making uh, our collection of other people's photographs uh, oftentimes uh, in, in many collectors cases exceeding their own collection of their own work uh, we also all collect books about photography and i thought that over a, a series uh, of podcasts that i'll spread out over some of the uh, episodes of camera position that i'd spend some time talking about books that i think are, are particularly important and the one that i'd like to start with is the day books of edward weston actually it's uh, sort of uh, depends on how you count them but uh, one or two books of the day books of edward weston and those of you who've been listening to camera position all along know that i'm a big edward weston fan he's certainly one of my very favorite photographers and of course uh, i have in my collection several books that uh, are of edward weston's photographs but the day books of Edward Weston are quite different from uh, the rest of Weston's body of work. And it, the, the, the day books have been published in a wide variety of formats over a long period of time. And uh, these, uh, uh, the, the pair that I have here, right, right here at my side, uh, the day books of Edward Weston, comes in, in two volumes. Uh, these were published by Aperture Corporation a number of years ago. The day books of Edward Weston I, uh, which comprises Mexico, and number two, um, California. And what these books are, are uh, journals, uh, published journals that Weston kept as, uh, as he worked through his life as a photographer, uh, handwriting some journals, usually early in the morning, uh, reflecting on the events of the previous day, and planning for his events of the day coming up. And I find them to be absolutely indispensable for any photographer's library, and it really doesn't matter what kind of photography you're doing. If you're interested in commercial photography or nature photography or any of the kinds of photography that Weston practiced, uh, still life, nude, landscape, uh, those uh, portrait, all of those sort of great themes that Weston dealt with. Um, but these books are filled with some of the most intriguing commentary about the medium that I've certainly ever read. And uh, Weston was a very uh, uh, serious and very committed uh, person, and uh, it is in his day books that he really sort of pours out 
what it is that that he talks about uh, in in his photographs and in what he was interested in in his life. Um, so he um, uh, really kind of gives a great deal of important information about what it is that he's doing as a photographer, what it is that he values as a photographer. Um, let me give you a couple of examples here. Here's one uh, little snippet from uh, one of the day books. I have been photographing our toilet, wrote Weston, that glossy enameled receptacle of, of extraordinary beauty. Here was every sensuous curve of the human figure divine, but minus the imperfections. Never did the Greeks reach a more significant consummation to their culture, and it somehow reminded me forward movement of finely progressing contours of the victory of Samothrace. So here's Weston saying that in photographing the toilet in his, in his house, he's not only found the same sorts of sculptural elements that he was interested in, in, in the human figure, but so much so that he feels as though the, uh, this, uh, glossy enameled receptacle is as beautiful as the uh, famed Victory of Samothrace sculpture uh, that is uh, currently uh, in residence at the Louvre. Uh, so the idea of uh, of finding subject matter in just about anything is uh, really quite remarkable. Um, the other uh, another bit here, ultimately, success or failure in photographing people depends on the photographer's ability to understand his fellow man. And that whole idea of really understanding your subject on a deeper level than just looking at it and finding it pretty or interesting or in some other way uh, uh, fascinating to you, uh, that really to make great photographs we need to have a much deeper understanding of what it is uh, that, uh, that we're doing. Uh, another, another one, this is one of my favorite ones, uh, now, to consult the rules of composition before making a picture, says Weston, is a little like consulting the law of gravitation before going for a walk. Such rules and laws are deduced from the accomplished fact. They are products of reflection. you got to love that, the idea of, uh, you know, the rules of composition, you, you sort of take them as a, as a matter of course, so a little like consulting the law of gravitation before going for a walk. So here's Weston really thinking through the process of what it is that he's interested in as a photographer, uh, what he's interested in in his life. He spends a lot of time talking about the sort of trials and tribulations of being both a commercial photographer and also a fine art photographer, because of course Weston made his living through commercial photography. So the day books of Edward Weston, uh, a remarkable series uh, or set of, of books, and they come in some cases in one volume, some cases in two volumes, some cases with photographs, some cases without photographs. They've been published in a variety of different ways, and I would encourage you to seek them out. I would uh, certainly encourage you to seek them out and put them on your bookshelf and keep them forever, uh, but uh, certainly your local library would also be a great resource for being able to get at uh, the, uh, the day books of Edward Weston. So uh, that's my first recommendation, my first and probably one of my strongest recommendations for a book about photography. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of an interesting idea that the first book that I'm uh, suggesting to you is not necessarily a book that is uh, a picture book. Um, there are certainly, in, at least in my uh, examples here that I have next to me, uh, a number of Weston's finest photographs in these uh, in this particular edition of uh, the day books. But uh, it it uh, doesn't have to be that looking at and thinking about photography is about looking at and looking at and thinking about pictures. Uh, in fact, thinking about the ideas behind the pictures is just as important. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day outside here, uh, the first day of October uh, where I live in uh, northern Illinois, and so I'm going to go out and uh, grab the camera and, and make some photographs, and I would encourage you to do that same thing too. So uh, thank you very much for listening to this episode of Camera Position, and do take a look at the uh, Photocast Network for some other fine photography podcasts, and uh, do take a uh, a second to uh, drop me a note and let me know uh, where you are and and uh, what what you're listening to uh, where you're listening to camera position. Uh, so uh, let me leave you with one last little bit of Edward Weston. 
As great a picture can be made as one's mental capacity, no greater. Art cannot be taught, it must be self-inspiration, though the imagination may be fired in the ambition and work directed by the advice and example of others. So there's Weston for the end of our camera position number 33, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Thanks for listening. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com.